Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, October 26, 2021, public board meeting of the Neshaminy School Board. <clears throat> we'll have a, uh, a roll call, please, Mrs. Burns. Mr. Parentano. Present. Mr. Allen. Present. Mrs. Bowman. Here. Ms. Boyle. Here. Mrs. Hallenbeck. Present. Mr. Kovitz. Here. Mr. Marrington. Here. Mr. Cirillo. Here. And Mr. Sullivan. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The board met in executive session this evening prior to this meeting to discuss matters of employment, issues related to labor relations, the purchase or lease of real property, matters related to litigation, and matters related to school safety and security. Mrs. Berner, any announcements this evening? No announcements. Thank you. Dr. McGee, your superintendent's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Parentano. I'd like to start on a, a somber note. Um, Last week, uh, Neshaminy lost one of the Neshaminy fa family, uh, Mr. Nick Izzy, a custodian at the Fertibar Pequessing co Complex, uh, passed su suddenly with an incident wh while at work. Um, Nick was beloved uh, by, his, uh, by his colleagues uh, and the staff in which he supported throughout the day and leaves behind a, uh, a family, uh, children, wife, and grandchildren. So if you'd all join me in a, a moment to reflect on Nick and, and support his family, please. Thank you. The COVID report for the week is uh, uh, pretty much unchanged. Uh, though the numbers were down last week, I'm not going to get excited about it until I see a pattern of down uh, over several weeks. So uh, schools continue to be safe and manageable, um, and uh, things are getting back to back to no, no, no normal, at least within our schools. Uh, I'd like to try to uh, emphasize some positives here. Uh, I'd like to start with our staff. Uh, though things are getting back to normal, let's face it, uh, normal isn't what it used, used to be. Uh, so staff from uh, our custodians, our bus drivers, to our teachers, our support staff are struggling themselves as students struggle and parents struggle as we, as we get back to, uh, to, to a normal situation as best as we can. I'd like to uh, underscore our transportation department. Uh, surrounding districts are um, uh, experiencing more difficulties than we are, and I think it's a testament to our, our, our employees in that department. Our bus drivers are going above and beyond. Our office staff who is scheduling uh, things to make sure it works because of their work, uh, from my view, other than a uh, delay here and there and a different bus pickup, for the most part, Neshaminy is running uh, without issue in that area, but there are people uh, over a hundred who are doing exceptional work to get that done. So I want to make sure that 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 doesn't go unnoticed. Hopefully, we have solutions to that uh, somewhere in the pipeline, so we don't have to continue working at over a hundred percent in that area. Moving on to some positives, I have a letter here from Four Di Di Diamonds Conquering Childhood Cancer from Penn State Health. Uh, they are thanking me, us, for a donation of $7,500 that came from Minithon last year under the direction of Miss Montone at Nish Nishamini High School. So Nishamini High School, through their efforts of Minithon's, Minithon, donated uh, $7,500 to Conquering Childhood Cancer. The next mini-thon is January 14th, 2022. And those of you who might remember, not that long ago, a, y a young lady stood at the podium and challenged us to uh, celebrate or not celebrate, to make, a, make awareness of uh, Childhood Cancer Month of, of September. So I'd like to report, Mr. Parentano, that uh, Sarah Har Harvey and our friends had lunch 
with 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 me and we've come up with some plans for next September and throughout the year the first thing we're going to do is connect them with those mini thon folks at the high school uh, it was a great experience I did learn that I do not speak fifth grade girls very well so fortunately mom came along to translate uh, for for me Continuing with the positives, last Friday was pink out throughout the district, again, uh, sponsoring a good cause. Uh, I received a text message when I got home after the football game that in the Chamonix High School, Richard Kane, the advisor of the student council, donated over $11,000 of proceeds uh, to, be to benefit cancer awareness from the Chamonix High School. So those that are following along in the last 60 seconds, the Chamonix High School and the efforts of the districts have donated nearly $20,000 uh, to good causes through their community service. Uh, both of these organizations are co-curricular or organizations. Co-curricular participation around the district is at the highest level I have seen it in my career. Uh, so students, in addition to our traditional athletes, the idea of co-curricular, -co just getting together to do something that everybody likes to do, uh, it's booming throughout the district to, to, to the point we weren't planned on supervising and busing that many kids. Uh, so that is a positive and a net result of uh, everyone working together. You'll see that reflected on our co-curricular appointments. Um, later in the meeting. Last Saturday, I was able to attend the 28th annual Kaleidoscope of Bands at the Chamonix High School, a great annual event um, uh, where bands come, I won't say compete, they're judged. Uh, so that the 28th annual, annual my favorite part is, is at, at the end when those bands come together and Mr. Lipton stands up there and all the bands together uh, play the national anthem. So again, another, another co-curricular co event that has lasted throughout the de decades. And finally, talking about another event, I wouldn't call it co-curricular, but it's definitely service or oriented. We have two speakers here from Maple Point who would like to talk to you about the upcoming Veterans Day Parade. So Stephanie and Emma, are you with us? It's your turn. So this is Stephanie Harkins and Emma Hunter who would like to again remind the board and the community about a tradition here at, the, at, at Maple Point about Veterans Day. Ladies. Good evening. My name is Emma Hunter and I'm Stephanie Harkins. Maple Point Middle School will be holding its annual Veterans Day ceremony on Wednesday, November 10, 2021. This is a wonderful way for our students and community to show appreciation for the sacrifices that our local veterans have made and to celebrate the courage and to celebrate the courage that they have shown in defending our country. This year, the recognition of our veterans will look a little different, but the sentiment is stronger than ever. The Maple Point students and staff would like to invite veterans and their drivers to participate in the Parade of Heroes drive through on the Maple Point campus. Using a one-way traffic flow, vehicles will enter through the driveway on Woodburn Avenue entrance, be greeted by staff, students, distinguished guests, and depart on the Langhorne Yardley Road exit. In recognition of safety, participants will rem remain in their vehicles. The parade begins at 11 a.m. and should conclude by 11.30 a.m. In the event of inclement weather, our parade will take place on Friday, November 12th, 2021. In addition to the Parade of Heroes, we'll be creating a video to be distributed to the community through Neshaminy School District social media sites. Remember, no registration is necessary to participate in the parade. We will see you on November 10th, 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. And I believe I see Mr. Hastings back there. I'm not sure if I see anyone else as part of the committee of Neshaminy uh, Maple Point staff who make sure that this happens every year. So thank you, Mr. Hastings and the people that you work with. Mr. Barantano, that's all I have. Thank you, Dr. McGee. And thank you, ladies, for that presentation. This will bring us to our first period of public comment. Uh, you'll be called to the podium. Uh, accordingly, you'll have three minutes at the podium. Uh, please give us your name, the area in which you reside, your occupation, and uh, please no personal attacks. Uh, Mrs. Burns, you want to call the first participant, please? Yes, number one, uh, Nicholas Montero.
we'll, we'll call you at the appropriate time, okay? Is there anyone on, on the... Matthew Taylor? For agenda item? Okay. Just well, how many... All right. Uh, call. Just call. Just call them. We'll, 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 there's only seven. We have plenty of time. Just All right. Then Nicholas start. Montero. All right. So last year in September of 2020, sir, I was here. Give us your name, oh, the area you reside, and if, occupation if you're a student, so you're a student. All right, so my name's Nicholas Montero. I reside in Langhorn, and I go, I'm a student. So can I start? All right, so last year in September of 2020, I was here talking about our school district's team name, the Redskins. The name is a racial slur used towards Native Americans and violates Neshevani's own policy 347, which states that discrimination of any kind is prohibited and specifically lists slurs as a form of discrimination. Native Americans all across the U.S., and more specifically Native Americans in the Neshevani community, have expressed discomfort and offense with the name, and the school board still decided to keep it, going as far as spending $400,000 to defend this racist and offensive name. The last time I was here, the school board said that it could not speak on this issue until the pending case regarding it was settled. So now that it is settled and you can talk about it, what is the excuse for keeping this racist name? Okay, so I do have a question. Can I ask a question? We, we don't answer questions at the podium. Uh, we'll save them to the later in the meeting and board comments. Okay, and, and, and board member may or may not answer your question. All right, okay. All. Thank you, though. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Okay, so my question is, if the school board's policy on racial slurs is they're impermissible, then how does the school district um, defend using the term Redskins as when it's a dictionary-defined slur towards Native Americans? All right, thank you. Matthew Taylor. Matthew Taylor, uh, Red Rose Gate, and I'm self-employed. Uh, we are now eight weeks into the school year in the community prevalence of COVID in districts with strict mass requirements versus districts with no mass requirement with a simple parent exemption are nearly identical. The data continues to show week after week that they make no difference. As far as I'm aware, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Penridge, Council Rock, and Central Bucks are doing just fine conducting school in a normal fashion with many students not wearing masks. Those schools aren't being shut down, classrooms aren't quarantining, and their board directors aren't being sued by the state. Based on prior votes and other explanations at the last board meeting, I believe there are at least five of you that believe masks should be optional for students. State and local governments overreach their authority over you, taking away your ability to represent the people that voted you into your positions. If you truly believe masks should be optional, why is it that you do nothing? Council Rock and Central Bucks have lawsuits fighting for their students and for their parents' right to choose what is best for their child. It's easy to sit back and wait for the mandate to be lifted or for another lawsuit to overturn it or to think that once kids are able to be vaccinated, that'll all go away and we'll finally be able to move on. However, the CDC already said that masks need to stay on even after they get vaccinated. It'll never end. I want to know what the five of you are doing to fight back for these kids and their families for what you believe should be their choice to mask their kids or not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe behind the scenes you have things in the works. If that's true, please elaborate and let us know what you're doing. Next Tuesday is election day and some of you are up for re-election. I'm looking forward to seeing the results of those races. I believe we have two fighters challenging for a couple seats on this board in Alicia Lafferty and Tanya Rinkus. I think that's exactly what this board needs. I, along with many other families, need to see more fight from this board. I wasn't in this district during the mascot name lawsuits, but if you can fight that hard and spend that much money for a fictitious school mascot, I think you should be fighting for your kids in this district much harder than you are currently. If you can no, long, you can no longer sit back and wait for things to change, you need to make the change happen yourselves. And lastly, for those of us who have spoken at board meetings, sent emails, made phone calls, fighting for our kids only to feel like our voices go unheard, we have the biggest opportunity to make our voices heard loud and clear when we vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. 
Stephen Lindley. Stephen Lindley. Linden. My name is Steve Linden. I'm a 34-year resident of Feasterville, and I've graduated three of my five children from this school district. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to address those assembled here this evening. <clears throat> my comments concern not only the election that will be held one week from today, but also those elections that will occur in the future. I've observed the proceedings in this room for some months now, and have easily and gratefully been impressed by those parents that have been courageous enough to come here and voice their disapproval with certain aspects of the rules and regulations they, and more importantly, their children, our children, have been faced with. At this time, it is absolutely necessary for me to point out that we in the Neshaminy School District are extremely lucky to have our board populated by so many people who think like we do. And even though you, we, were less than pleased with the result of at least one recent vote we witnessed here, we have to remain ever mindful that to a great extent, our board members were left with few, if any, real options available to them. As I'm sure you're aware, or at least I certainly hope you're aware, Students and parents in other districts, some of which are in other states, some of which are much, much closer to home, have not fared quite so favorably. If you're not sure about this statement or unaware of events relating to districts closer to home, please see me after the meeting for clarification as well as documentation. If anyone in this room is under the impression that their need to come here and voice that disapproval will end with the current mask issue, I'm here to say that that is a very dangerous and naive misconception under which to operate. The mask issue is about to turn into a mandatory vaccine, vaccination issue, and if we're all not hypersensitive to it and completely on it, and I mean completely, turn into a curriculum issue will not, which will not be far off. Once again, let's not lose sight of our current good fortune with the board as it is currently constituted. But as Ronald Reagan astutely reminded us, freedom is only one, genera one generation away from extinction. And there's an important lesson to be learned from that. The apparent favorable composition of our school board is only one local election away from being extremely disfavored by many of us. Great care must be exercised to forestall such an eventuality. In fact, if due diligence is not taken starting now, eventuality will become a certainty. Fortunately, there are proven processes and plans of action to be adopted that can, and in reality have in other jurisdictions, been extremely successful. You have 10 but, seconds. But the time to make ourselves aware of what must be implemented in the future is now. It is an easy, but it certainly is necessary. Let's pledge to start right now. Thank you. Randy Miles. My name is Randy Miles. I'm, uh, I live in Langhorn. I'm a research scientist and a father of three Nishamni students. Uh, my comments are in a very basic nature. Um, we are so divided in our nation and in our community that we can't even agree on what basic facts are. Uh, we, when I was in school, I was taught that all truth is relative, and that has brought us to a place where we don't even know, we don't even believe anymore that truth is knowable. Uh, and so the left believe the pundits on the left, and the right believes the pundits on the right, and no one can agree on even what the science tells us. So what do we do? We need to think critically, and that's my point. We need to teach our kids how to think critically, and not just um, teach controversial theories or um, disguised as facts, but we should teach them how to evaluate the truth and identify errors. Uh, in order to do that, we need to think critically ourselves. We cannot keep regurgitating slogans and mantras uh, of our political parties. Um, we must pursue truth and learn to identify truth. This is foundational to education and is foundational leader 
to leadership. So it's doubly foundational to the school board and to the Nishamani leadership. Um, the problem is that we are fa fallible. The, my favorite songwriter, Rich Mullins, sang, we are frail, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, forged in the fires of human passion and choking on the fumes of selfish rage. And with these our hells and our heavens so few inches apart, we must be awfully small and not as strong as we think we are. My point is this, it takes enormous amounts of humility to admit and even to recognize when we are wrong or if we even we may be wrong. I've seen this in myself and it brings me great shame when I consider the pain I've caused others because of my pride and my inability to see my own failures. But humility is critical and critical to critical thinking because pride blinds us and keeps us from recognizing truth. So there's another problem. Despots and all those who hunger for power over you and over all of us do not want you to think for yourself. They, do, they want you to only accept their version of the truth and follow their uh, advice and listen to their experts. And if you, their experts disagree with, with yours, then they discredit you. But they can't stop you from thinking for yourself and they can't stop you from fighting for the truth unless you let them. So I urge you as a school board and I urge everybody in the district to do two things. First, humbly evaluate what do you actually believe and why do you actually believe it? And secondly, if you are convinced without a shadow of doubt of the truth, humbly, respectfully, and tenaciously defend the truth. And for those who are willing to hear it and are asking what is truth, I have only one recommendation. Ten seconds. Thank you. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if that discredits everything that I've said, then you probably haven't read his teachings. So I challenge you to read them and then reevaluate what you think. Thank you. Thank you. James Powell. Hello. My name is James Powell. I live in Twin Oaks and I work for a warehouse. Um, once again, I'm here for parental choice. That is what I stand my grounds on right now. I want you to give power back to the parents in these situations. By you letting you, by us letting you dictate how, not just you, I'm talking about the whole government, everybody above you, and how they can tell you what to do and what to think, just like the previous talker was talking about. Critical thinking, math, Basic science. You kept. To, you, everybody wants to tell us to keep on looking at the science. Science is numbers. Why don't you look at the numbers? You look at the numbers. The death count for 2021 is in the same realm as it was for the last 10 years. Maybe 200,000 deaths here and there. It's not as bad as we think it is, people. We need to think critically here. We need to give the parental choice back to the parents so we can dictate how our children want to be. If we don't teach them to think for themselves or have them know what's going on, we're never going to be better as people. We all need to think about everything that we do and the things that we put on the community. It's not right what, they, what you and everybody above you does. Because if you look at the numbers, the numbers don't lie. It's the one thing in this whole world that is taught the same to everyone. We all do math the same way. Look at the numbers. Take the masks off the children. Let us decide that. I have already decided to take my kid out of the school. I was here. I came to this school district because it was a good school district. I grew up in the Pensbury School District. I had cousins that came here that played football for the school, that played hockey for the school. They bled the blue and the red. I'm sorry because I'm still black and orange you know I'm, I'm learning your ways but i came to this school district because i knew it was a good school district i didn't move to this school district because i wanted to put my kid in cca no i came here because this school taught good values to my family's members they both went on my one guy my one cousin's a cop he's a sheriff you know my other cousin he runs a company 
You guys taught him how, how them to become good people by letting them choose or, or having their parents tell them, not tell them, but just give them the idea that everything's going to be okay. But you guys got to let off the reins a little bit. You got to give power back to the people. This country was built for the people, by the people. You guys are having a vet parade. You're honoring people that fought for this country. Just do the right thing and take off the mask. Thank you. Azalea Miles. Uh, I'm Azalea. I'm a student here. I live in Langhorn. My um my thing hasn't been spoken about yet on the agenda. Is that okay? Go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> In July of 2020, after the Black Lives Matter movement was re-sparked, Superintendent Dr. McGee wrote in an email in a section titled Civil Unrest Surrounding Black Lives Matter and Systemic Racism that racism and discrimination have no place in our district and that he and the district would work to combat it. And Policy 347 of Neshaminy School District states that this district does not tolerate discrimination and, inc and includes verbal bigotry such as slurs as an example of impermissible discrimination. But the district is not carrying out these policies at all. I have never seen my school in a Chamonix High do anything to combat, combat racism. In fact, I've only seen them enable it. One of many examples of this is the fact that a racist student at my school still freely w walking around my school with no consequences, as if the school does not care at all that she is racist. Last week, a black girl posted... There's no personal attacks. You can't name names. All right, please keep your comments to the subject matter, okay? Last week, a black girl posted a video of a racist white girl at my school saying the N-word with a hard R, and the video was from two to three years back and called her out for it, for it on social media and the next day the black girl was called down to the office and sent home because she said that she was uneasy about being around the racist student the next day the racist student posted on social media bragging about the fact that nothing happened to her and laughing about the situation later the racist student was escorted out of gym by two teachers as if her life was in danger or something and brought to the office obviously i was not in the office but the racist said herself to students in her physics class that the three principals she was talking to told her that she was the victim them in this situation and to report to them if anyone bothered her about it because they would protect her. She bragged that the school was protecting and covering for her and that her stepdad is a member of administration, making her untouchable. And she's been bragging on Snapchat and TikTok ever since that she didn't get in trouble, laughing about the situation and saying that she doesn't care about the backlash she's gotten for being racist and about how not sorry she is. But I don't want to put too much attention on her. To be clear, this is the school district's fault. This girl knew she could get away with this because she knows you people do not care about racism. What kind of anti-racist school protects racists? And yes, I understand that the video was from a while ago, but the post of her saying that she did not care and an, an administration trying to cover for her are from last week. A real anti-racist school would have punished her because no anti-racist school would allow someone who's done and said these things to freely walk around school with no consequences. And to tell her that she's a victim and that they'd protect her was even worse. You guys say you are an anti-racist district, but anyone could say that. The actual handling of conflicts involving racism in this district, though, show that the, the Mr. McGee's race anti-racist email and that the anti-discrimination policy in this district is just a front to make yourselves look better. If this district was actually anti-racist, a lot of things in this place would be different. But in this specific scenario, that racist white girl would be punished. Anyone who tried to cover it up would be punished. And you guys would set a precedent that would make sure that anyone who was caught engaging in racism would be punished. Because right now there is none, which makes your anti-discrimination and anti-racist policies and promises just look performative. If all three of these things don't happen, then you're anti-discrimination policies are lies and Ten this seconds. is a racist school district who does not care about the well-being of its black students i'm done thank you very much um can i ask a question too Shh, go right ahead um so first of all um i want to know what like the qualifications or maybe disqualifications are for um like running for the for the school board to to like you know be, be elected and this, that's a political question this is a school board so we're not going to answer a political question 
What? The question is about the school board. What are you talking about? You're asking how you run for school board. I asked what are the qualifications for someone who wants to run. Uh, that is set by the, by, the, by the county and the state. That's a political question. You wouldn't know as the school board president? I know, okay, but we're not going to talk about that because it's not related to the school's business, okay? okay. That information is available from the Bucks County website. You can go on there and you can research that information. Uh, I also have another question. Do you guys often use um, your religion to, you know, make decisions based off the school? Because um, a person who gave a speech before me were, was talking about um, Jesus Christ and, you know, his readings and how it should influence your decisions. I would hope that wasn't happening because not everyone at the school district is Christian. So that would be a violation of religious freedom. So, yeah, I want to know that. Thank you. No further signups. Did we call those that were excluded? Okay. All right, we're going to proceed now to our. Oh. No, you already had your three minutes. There's a second. Excuse me? He had his time at the podium. He chose not to use his three minutes. There's a second comment period towards the end of the meeting, and you're more than welcome to come up at the second comment period and, and make another statement. Okay? All righty, that brings us to our business agenda, starting with the routine matters. I'd like to make a master motion for 2.01 minutes, 2.02 treasurer's report, 2.03 check register and procurement card purchases, 2.04 investments, 2.05 exonerations. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mr. Sullivan, uh, would you make a master motion for 3.01, 3 3.02, 3 3.03, and 3.04? I think you just did. I'd like to make a master motion to approve 3.01, retirements, resignations, end of assignments, 3.02, certificated appointments, 3.03, leaves of absence and 3.04 revised leaves of absence. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. The master motion's been made for 3.01, 3.02, 3.03, 3.04. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. 3.05, Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to make a motion to approve 3.05 co-curricular appointments. Resolved that the Nishamity Board of School Directors hereby approves the following co-curricular appointments for certified and support staff. There's 73 uh, names on the list. I would like to pull out uh, item number four from the list and approve the rest of the list. Motion's been made on 3.05. There are 73 names on the list. It's been asked that the uh, one name be omitted. Uh, that would be name number four. Um, may we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Boyle. Any comments, questions, or concerns? What, you guys want to have another race this week? or no. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mrs. Hollenbach, uh, 4.01, please. I'd like to make a motion for 4.01 retirements, resignations, and of assignments. Resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the following retirements, resignations of support staff. There are 14 names on the list. Thank you, Mrs. Hollenbach. A motion's been made on 4.01. May I have a second? Second. I beat you to it. There you go. Mr. Allen, with a second. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to... Um, we have one employee, Lynn Stradling, if I'm pronouncing her name right, a library aide, was with us 31.4 years. Thank you very much for your service to Neshaminy, and we wish you well with, our, with your retirement. Hearing any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mrs. Hollenbach, a master motion for... 
I'd like to make a master motion for 4.02, support appointments. 4.03, ancillary support, support appointments. 4.04, leaves of absence. And 4.05, return, revised leaves of absence. Thank you, Ms. Solenbach. A master motion's been made for 4.02, May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motions passes 9 to 0. Mrs. Bowman, uh, 5.01, please. Sure, I'd like to make a motion 5.01 overnight trips, whereas according to the board policy number 618, trips extending overnight are permitted by authorization of the Board of School Directors only. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Nishamini Board of School Directors hereby approve the overnight trips listed below. And there are six trips listed. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. Uh, motion's been made on 5.01. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Abstention? I'm sorry. Abstain. I abstain from that. You're going to say, do I have to do a roll? You, you, you do need to do a roll call. At yes. this point, we'll do a roll call. For this one. For Mrs. Burns, call normal roll call, please. Yeah. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Bowman? Yes. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mrs. Hellenbeck? Abstain. Mr. Kovitz? Yes. This whole side of the table, the our mics all died. Mm -hmm. Yours is on. Yours is on. Yours is on. Oh, it is. Oh, there you go. Mr. Marrington? Uh, yes. Mr. Parentana? Yes. Mr. Cervello? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Abstain. Seven yes, two abstain. Motion passes with seven yeas and two abstentions. Just a point of order, Mr. Chairman, if there is an, uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry, uh, if there is a abstention, the reason for the abstention must be, be stated at the meeting. At this time, I would ask, like to ask those that uh, abstain to state their reason for abs their abstention. Uh, I abstained from this vote because one of the class trips my child will be attending who attends the school. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan? I abstain because I have a child who will be attending the junior class trip, and I also have a child who will be going to the cheerleading national qualifier competition. Thank you. That'll move us to 5.02, American Education Week. Uh, Mrs. Bowman, would you read that as well, please? Sure, I'd like to make a motion, 5.02, American Educational Week, whereas public school... Public schools are the backbone of our country, providing young people with the tools they need to maintain our nation's precious values of freedom, civility, and equality. And whereas being equipping, by equipping young Americans with both practical skills and broader intellectual abilities, public schools give them hope for and access to a productive future. And whereas public education employees work tirelessly to serve our children and communities with care and professionalism, and whereas public schools are community catalysts bringing together adults and children, educators and volunteers, business leaders and elected officials in a common enterprise. Now therefore be it resolved that the Nishamini Board of School Directors hereby recognizes November 15th through 19th, 2021 as the 100th Annual Observance of American Education Week as this district works to empower each child to become a productive citizen and lifelong learner. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. Motion's been made on 5.02. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Boyle. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. 
Mr. Sullivan, 6.01, please. 6.01, Act 34, Hearing Schedule, New Elementary School Project in Langhorn. The Board of School Directors in the Chamonix School District hereby, hereby adopts for the new Maple Point Elementary School Project a maximum project cost of $43,364,152 and a maximum building construction cost of $34,621,642 for the construction of the new Maple Point Elementary School, Middletown Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. The Board of Directors of the Neshaminy School District hereby authorizes and directs a public hearing to be held at 7 p.m. on Thursday, December 2nd, 2021 in the auditorium at the Maple Point Middle School, 2250 Langhorn Yardley Road, Langhorn, Pennsylvania, 19047, to provide information to the residents and taxpayers of the Neshaminy School District and to solicit comments relative to the project. The Secretary of the Neshaminy School District is hereby authorized and directed to cause a notice of such public hearing to be published once in the Bucks County Carrier Times, such publication will appear on or before November 11, 2021, and to be in the form attached. The Board of School Directors of the Neshaminy School District hereby authorizes and directs that a description of the project be prepared and made available to the public no later than November 11, 2021, and that such description be mailed to the news media for release no later than November 11th, 2021. The Board of School Directors of the Chamonix School District hereby authorizes and directs the administrative staff, solicitor, independent financial advisor, architect, and construction manager to do and perform or cause to be done and performed on behalf of the school district any and all acts and things as may be necessary in connection with the project in order to carry out the pur purposes of the act of this resolution. The proper officers of the Neshaminy School District are hereby authorized and directed to execute any and all documents and to do so and cause to be done any and all acts and things necessary or proper for the execution or carrying out of this resolution. The Board of School Directors of the Neshaminy School District hereby authorizes and directs the proper officers, officers of the Neshaminy School District to submit to the Pennsylvania Department of Education a certified copy of this resolution together with a copy of the minutes or transcript of the aforementioned public hearing, a proof of publication of the notice thereof, and a complete description of the project, all as required by Act 34 of 1973 of the Pennsylvania General Assembly, as well as any other documents re required by the department in connection herewith. You gotta get the end. Re resolution adopted this 26th day of October, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. The motion's been made on 6.01. May I have a second? Se second by Mr. Allen. Any comments, questions, or concerns before the board has any? I would like to ask our attorney, just for the public, to explain uh, the, the necessity uh, for this procedure. Yes, thank you, Mr. Puritano. Uh, the Pennsylvania School Code requires for any uh, new school construction to have an Act 34 hearing. That's what this resolution is setting up. The Act 34 requirements uh, require a public hearing, uh, advertising, notification to um, a newspaper, This, in this case, the Bucks County Courier Times, and I guess a project booklet to be available to the public. So again, this resolution is setting all those applicable dates in accordance with the school code. So on December 2nd, it looks like, there'll be, there'll be a hearing, I guess, in the auditorium at this school uh, for the purposes of complying with uh, the school code. Thank you. And for additional transparency uh, on this motion, uh, the fact that we're having an Act 34 meeting, hearing, excuse me, it does not mean that the school board has has approved the project or entered into any agreements for the project at this time. That, that's correct. The project would still have to go out the bid. It would have to be right. uh, financing put in place. So yes. Right. And the dollar figures that are in uh, this agreement are there based upon um, uh, uh, construction estimates of a not to exceed number and actually do not reflect the, the uh, actual end cost of the project, which will be determined after bids may or may not be accepted. That's correct. If the, I'm sorry, um, if the numbers, this is a not to exceed number, so if it's lower, um, th that's fine. If it goes above the two numbers set forth in the resolution, then we would have to go back through this process again. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Torrente. Are there any other questions or comments from the board? Does this require a roll call? 
Yes, a roll call would be. Okay, right. Mrs. Yes. Burns, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Berman? Yes. Ms. Boyle? Yes. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Yes. Mr. Kovitz? Yes. Mr. Marrington? Yes. Mr. Parentano? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Motion passes nine to zero. That'll bring us to um, 6.02. Uh, Mr. Cirillo, would you read that, please? I'd like to make a motion uh, for 6.02 assessment appeal settlement. Whereas Michael J., forgive me, Torsia and Jean Kristen Torsia filed a 2021 assessment appeal for tax map parcel 22 077 036 with the Court of Common Pleas of Bucks County, Pennsylvania, at docket 2020 uh, 06624. And whereas in conjunction with the business administrator, the solicitor for the Neshaminy School District has negotiated and has recommended to the Board of School Directors that the said tax year 2021 assessment appeal be settled as herein, as herein after set forth. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy School District stipulates and agrees that the 2021 tax year assessment for tax map parcel 22-077-036 owned by Michael J. Torsia and Jean Kristen Torsia be fixed at $56,070 per the attached stipulation and be it further resolved that the school board of directors authorizes the school district solicitor to execute the stipulation as presented and to the file and to file the same with the Bucks County Court of Common Pleas, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, upon approval by all parties, including the owners, County of Bucks and Middletown Township. Thank you, Mr. Cirillo. The motion's been made on 6.02. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Kovitz? Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, questions, or concerns on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? <coughs> motion passes 9 to 0. Mr. Allen, 6.03, please. Thank you, Mr. Bertano. I'd like to bring a 6.03 motion to the floor. Middletown Township Police and Lower South Township Police MOUs. Whereas Pennsylvania Code 10.11 directs that each chief school administrator shall execute and update on a biennial basis a memorandum of understanding with each local police department having jurisdiction over school property of the school entity and whereas the Neshaminy School District desires to continue its memorandum of understanding with both the Middletown Township Police Department and the Lower Southampton Township Police Department, now therefore be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the memoranda of understanding with the Middletown Township Police Department and the Lower Southampton Township Police Department outlining the relationship of cooperation and mutual support. Thank you, Mr. Allen. A motion's been made on 6.03. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cirillo. At this particular time, Dr. McGee, could you just elaborate on, on, on why we have these agreements? Sure. Um, I guess almost a decade ago, it be, began with one uh, school resource officer at the Shamany High School, and since then we have moved to uh, three total ar around the district. And I think the, uh, the last sentence of the motion um, building a relationship of cooperation and mutual support that focuses on students. So uh, not only are, do they make our, our schools a safer place, but they also build relationships between our community and our students and our staff. And uh, I see it every day. Uh, they are part of what goes on in our school. The, the three of them are dedicated uh, law enforcement officers that only work at the Shamany schools. So uh, they, are, they are part of what we do every day. And uh, um, uh, I'm looking forward to continuing that for another decade. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from the board? I would just like to continue to extend my uh, thanks and thanks from the entire board to the, um, uh, the uh, supervisors of Middletown Township as well as the supervisors of Lower Southampton that work in conjunction with us to, to provide these services uh, for our students who are our residents in our schools. Um, I have witnessed... Uh, 
firsthand uh, this program, and it is excellent, and I only hope that it can grow more uh, in the future. So uh, saving that, uh, hearing no other comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes 9 to 0. Now comes to the subject of the day for Mr. Marrington. <laughs> 6.04, please. Oh boy. Okay. Yep. 6.04 is the Langhorne Mayor's Playground Agreement of Sale. Uh, be it resolved that the school district enter into an agreement with Langhorne Borough for the sale of Mayor's Playground, dated October 26, 2021, hereafter, herein after the agreement, for the sale by the school district of three parcels of real property located at East Maple Avenue and East Richardson Avenue, Langhorne Borough, Langhorne, Pennsylvania, commonly and collectively known as the Mayor's Playground. Uh, further identified as Bucks County tap, uh, tax map parcels 18-004-188, 18-004-188-001, and 18-004-189. For the sum of $175,000 in accordance with and subject to the terms and conditions of the agreement, which is attached, attached here to and incorporated into this resolution. Be it further resolved that the President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, and Solicitor of the School District are hereby authorized and directed on behalf of the School District and under its corporate seal or otherwise in accordance with and subject to the conditions set forth in section 707 of the Public School Code of 1949 to execute the agreement and such other documents and to take such further action as may be necessary or desirable to effectuate the agreement and intent of this resolution. And this resol resolution is adopted on this 26th day of October, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Marrington. Motion's been made on 6.04. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Any comments, questions, or concerns? At this time, Mr. Torrente, would you just uh, explain a little uh, more in depth about you know, why uh, we're transferring this property, some of, the, some of the history behind it, and the fact that it's going to remain perpetual open space use for the uh, for the public. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Piritano. Uh, right now, the um, the mayor's playground, it's, it's currently obviously owned by the district. It's uh, rented to Langhorne Borough. It has been rented to Langhorne Borough uh, for park purposes for, um, I guess, over 30 years. I'm not sure of the exact time period. Um, but this agreement is going to obviously transfer the property to Langhorne Borough. Uh, the transfer document, the deed that's going to be recorded, will have a reversion clause in it. If the property ceases to be used as a park use uh, by Langhorne Borough, it will be reverted uh, back to the, uh, the school district. So uh, basically, the school district will essentially retain control of that property for the purposes of a park use if it needs to. Um, it is uh, permitted specifically by the school code um, to be sold to Langhorne Borough without court approval because it's within the geographical boundaries uh, of the school district. So uh, that's, I guess, some of the background on it. it is, it's an as-is purchase. Um, there's no responsibility really going forward for the district on this. So. And as for some of the lineage of that particular pro th those particular parcels, as I remember we discussed, they... Um, they originally belonged to Langhorne Borough. Uh, I believe they were, Dave uh, would know better, they were yeah, originally they're, they're, when, when the Chamonix School District was created back in the 1950s, um, the consolidation of the Chamonix School District, the borough basically gave the land to the school district. And at one time, it's where they played football. <laughs> the Chamonix High School, when it was still Langhorne, uh, actually played their you know football there uh, in what's now Mayor's Playground. Uh, some of those other fields also were athletic fields. Um, that arrangement has lasted from the early 1950s until the until today, really. 
Um, the borough and the district have had a relationship going back, I guess, as Mr. Torrente said, uh, at least 30 years. And the borough has made a lot of improvements on the property, um, playground improvements, fencing, soccer fields, uh, 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 gardens, and so forth, walkways, and has, has felt that they would like to get it back, you know, to, to buy the land back uh, so they can continue to make further improvements on it um, without having to consult with the district. So that's kind of the short story. It can go on and on, but that's the short version. Thank you, Mr. Marrington. Uh, hearing nothing else, uh, this would be a roll call vote again? Yes, it would be a roll call, Mr. Uh, call the roll, Mrs. Burns. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Bowman? Yes. Ms. Boyle? Uh, yes. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Yes. Mr. Kovitz? Yes. Mr. Marrington? Yes. Mr. Parentana? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. And Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Nine yes. Zero no. Motion passes nine to zero. That will bring us to our closing end of the board's meeting this evening. Does anyone have any other board business they wish to put in front of the board this evening? Hearing none, we're going to move on to our second period of public comment. During our second period of public comment, uh, you can approach the podium on, on your own. The same rules apply. You have three minutes. State your name, the area in which you live, your occupation, and please no personal attacks. Whoever wants to address the podium, please make your way to the So, I'm Nicholas Montero, I live in Langhorn, and I'm a student at Neshaminy High School. And I'm rising once again in defense of Neshaminy's mask mandate, or the state mask mandate, but keeping masks on students as a whole. I'm sorry. But as a high school student at Neshaminy, I'm here to tell you that masks are not the problem that many parents in our community are making them out to be. Masking up our students is one of the only proven ways to stop the spread of COVID-19 and keep our students in school. Masking works, and the science backs it up, period. It is in everyone's best interest to keep the mask on as it allows students to remain in school for in-person learning. As somebody who experienced online learning firsthand, I can tell you that I would do anything to remain in person, and if masks will keep me and my fellow students in school, then so be it. Living through this pandemic, I have noticed a trend. Those that complain the most about the consequences of this pandemic are those that are doing the least to stop this pandemic. Wearing a mask during a pandemic is a civic duty that protects your fellow neighbors, our families, and allows us to do our part in ensuring healthcare workers can do their jobs. It is imperative that we keep masks on so that we may finally end this pandemic. I would like to also add one more thing. I do not believe that this is a parent's choice because it does not exist in this situation as one parent's choice can put another parent's child on a ventilator. This disease has the potential to infect everyone it comes into contact with, and for this reason, we must all wear our masks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Does anyone else wish to approach the podium? Go right ahead. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Sophia Giordeo. I, um, I live in Peasterville, and I'm a student. I just have four questions for the board. Um, for the bus driver issue, do you think that they deserve better pay and better benefits? And do you think that that would like help the issue? Um, for like the whole racism issue, do you think that the district correctly punished the student that was saying the racial slurs? And do you think that we should teach more about like different histories, um, like black history, Hispanic and Asian history? And do you think the school board will be handling, handling future racial conflicts the same way? That's all. Does anyone else wish to approach the podium? Go right ahead. I have a question. It's kind of like... Start um, off with your name again. Okay, I'm pretty sure I already said it, but it's Azalea Miles. Thank you. So I have a question that's kind of um, expanding on what Nico talked about, which was 
the team name situation. Um, so last year we were here, we spoke to you about it. We gave you guys a bunch of points as to like why you shouldn't have it about like it violating your own policy and you know, things like that. And you guys basically said that you guys weren't gonna tell us anything or defend it at all because the case was pending. It's not pending anymore. So I wanna know what the excuse is and what your defense is. Um, and if you can answer that um, and also answer um, about my speech about why the girl in um about why the the girl in my high school wasn't punished and like how you guys are gonna set a precedent to punish kids who are caught engaging in, in racism since you guys claim to be anti racist or at least the superintendent claims that and your policy claims that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Great. Hi, my name is Jeremy Blumenfeld. I'm a lawyer. I live in uh, the Maple Point development and have lived there for 20 years. I have a high school junior. I just wanted to offer a few comments in further support of the continued requirement for masks in schools, including for the high schools. First, I appreciate that after the August board meeting, people generally have been respectful of the views articulated by others and I'm glad that this board is asking people to be thank to be respectful of others. So thank you for that. Second, I wanted you board members to hear and know that there are people who do support masks in schools for students, including for high school students. It's reasonable to require masks in school for the same reasons you engage in lots of other activities requiring safety protocols for students in school to help keep the kids safe. We've all seen the emails from Dr. McGee reporting that the case counts in our community remain high, but that the schools are safe. Masks are part of that safety effort. So thank you for that. And thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Once, twice. Okay. I'll move us on to a uh, board comment. Uh, Dr. McGee, do you have any commentary you want to offer this evening? Sure. Um, Wait a second. I want credit for getting it right this thank time. You. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, to our students that spoke, uh, thank you for coming. But um, what I will offer is uh, when I'm at the Chamonix High School next this week, I will stop by and visit you. Uh, I think Azalea, we have spoken before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we will continue that 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 dialogue. I think the best way to have a dialogue is when one, one can talk back and forth. This format is not where we can talk back and forth. Uh, so I will visit you at you at the Chamonix High School when I'm there later this week, and we will set something up. Um, as far as the specific issue, I think uh, uh, someone stated it themselves. It's three or four years old. Uh, so 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 the 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 issue is resurfaced because of the it's on social media so it's a lesson to everyone what's on social media stays on social media forever um so uh, again i'll talk specifically about, about that uh not not in this forum all right mr parenton that's that all thank you any board member thank go you. right ahead mr trente thank you mr Piritano. I, I just before there's board comment i just want to make a couple things clear about some stuff i heard uh, during public comment about the masking. Um, there is, in fact, a, a statewide masking order. It is in place. It applies to every school, whether it's Council Rock, Neshaminy, Pensbury, Palisades. Um, also, my understanding, and I heard this as well, that there was some litigation instituted by some school districts with respect to that masking order. Um, I don't believe that to be the case either. I think the lawsuits that have been filed were not generated or not filed by the school districts. Instead, they were filed by citizens of, of those districts. So I just wanted to make that clear. And, and the one suit was joined by, uh, was it the Speaker of the House? or I, That's my understanding. Yeah, I'm not sure which one. But, yeah, yeah, one of them joined that. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments this evening? Adam, you want to go right ahead? So uh, uh, to the, the folks, uh, the, the, uh, the students that came up and spoke today, um, I just wanted to, to thank you for, for doing your part. Uh, we all have our roles to play, and uh, I appreciate 
the questions that were asked. Um, and, and it's not just the students that showed up today. We've had students in the past that have questioned the masks, whether they were anti-mask or they were pro-mask. Um, I just think it's really important. I, I believe there's another gentleman here who spoke about getting to the truth. And uh, I think it's really important for us to discover that truth through uh, healthy, healthy dialogue. Uh, I've seen it happen here on several occasions. I think it's really wonderful to see, and, and I'd love to see even more of our students come out and speak what they believe their truth is, and uh, uh, and again encourage some some extra dialogue. So for that, I really I really salute you. I appreciate each and every one of you, um, and that's what makes uh, this district what it is. So uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Anyone else? Seeing none, Mr. Allen, would you like to add something? I would like to address a few things. Uh, starting off with our Maple Point students and the Veterans Day Parade of Heroes on November 10th. Uh, I, I can't put into words how thrilled I am that that event is going forward this year. Um, it's usually... Uh, an event that we're able to welcome our, our veterans of the community into the Maple Point Auditorium. Uh, it's a wonderful event. Uh, if, I, if I am able, I always try to take off and attend. It's fantastic just to see how the veterans and, and the children, our students, interact. It is just phenomenal. And uh, I, am, I am, you know, with COVID being out of school, uh, I know that that was a missed event. I'm glad to see it in whatever form it can take place, that it's back. Um, so, and I, I thank our students for coming to the podium as, you know, addressing it. Um, the mayor's playground, I am, I'm also quite glad that we don't have to keep going through that every year. <laughs> um, I know Dave has spoken on many occasions, uh, uh, you know, the, that we are able to close that deal. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for the board here, and I am happy for the borough uh, that their ownership of it, or um, I guess stewardship would maybe be a better word for it, that allows them to do uh, various things that they weren't able to do under a lease agreement. So um, I'm very glad we were able to come to an agreement on that. Now, uh, carefully walking line here because we cannot discuss or I feel it is inappropriate to discuss politics or, or election issues. Um, I will just say that, and I, I believe a number of us feel this way, that our votes are informed by a belief that these are our schools. This is our community. What goes on here should be our decision not something that comes from Harrisburg or even Washington. There are certain guidelines we obviously have to follow, but local control, for lack of a better word, would always be my preference. And that has informed my votes moving forward, including the question on the Redskins. I feel, to me, it's a valid question. Our students have brought it up. Members of the community have brought it up. It's a discussion that needs to happen. We can freely talk about it somewhat now. And I believe that discussion will happen at some point. But my point and my fight for our right to retain that name had everything to do with local control of what happens in our schools. And uh, I will conclude with that because anything further could get Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, just trying to finish up real quick. Um, some of the students that came up, they, they made questions about how we deal with student discipline. Uh, the school board does not deal with student discipline. Student discipline is an action of the school administration. There are actually state and federal laws in place that, if I'm correct, prevent the administration from discussing some matters uh, related to student student affairs with us. Saying that, the school board does have policies in place. We empower our administration through those policies to carry out 
such, meaning how they're written, I don't know, lack of a better word, the law of the land is, uh, you know, basically how our administrators take the policies that the board writes and then implements them into everyday uh, actions inside the school. Yes, so uh, our job is to take the policies, uh, interp interpret them as intended, and put consistent, fair, uh, equitable procedures in place to make sure they're implemented across the district. Right. So while we will not and cannot legally comment on individual cases of, of um, discipline, uh, when the administration does bring them to us, we evaluate them. We ask questions all the time. Okay, and the administration informs us based upon the law. The only time that the school board is informed directly about a case of student discipline is when the administration has recommended a student for expulsion. At that time, uh, the board takes on a legal role, and there is a hearing that takes place, and the board weighs in at that time. One of the reasons why the statute states that the board isn't told about discipline issues is because of the fact that we may have to act as a jury at some time in the future and we are not to be biased by prior inf information. So if the school board has faith in the administrations that they have hired and empowered to carry out those policies, uh, we trust that they are doing such and if cases arise uh, where there is an inference that from complaints from the public that may ask us to question that, we will bring those questions and we will look for, look for answers. But as far as us commenting directly on student discipline, we don't do that. That is not, that is not our, our role in the, uh, in the uh, statutory uh, scheme, as it may be, of, uh, of how student discipline is, is protected. Um, some asked about the Redskins thing, as Mr. Um, uh, Allen, thank you for, for reminding me. <laughs> um, Mr. Allen, Allen uh, uh, alluded to, uh, I believe it was our meeting J June 2020. June 2020, um, you can go back on the website. In fact, I believe the statement is still on the uh, front page uh, of the uh, Nishamani district site. I, re I read a long statement about the, um, uh, the resolution of, of the issue with the PHRC. Uh, I stated on there uh, specifically about what I think the board's next actions need to be. I stated that the um, board and the district need time to recover uh, from the COVID first, which is a bigger priority uh, to get this district back to where it needs to be and providing the education that we need to be and that we do know, need to have a bigger uh, conversation uh, with our community at large, uh, discuss whether or not we will maintain uh, the symbols and images and the, and the name and how we can, and if we do choose to keep them, uh, how we build upon them and start to uh, integrate possibly uh, more uh, uh uh, indigenous people of this area's uh, history and culture into our own curriculum. So there's a bigger conversation uh, to be had about that. As far as those that believe it's racist and those that believe it's, it's perfectly okay, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, this board, there's varying opinions on this board. Um, none, as Mr. Allen indicated to, uh, the, the, the team named Redskins, really had nothing to do with our fight against the PHRC. The PHRC attempted uh, to take uh, um, control away from the school district, and the board uh, felt that that was wrong, and we were going to fight against that. Uh, some person at the podium, uh, I can't remember which person it was, made the relationship between the, uh, the, the um, you had the, the suit over the, um, the Redskins, why can't you have a suit over this? It's comparing apples and oranges. I understand it seems very similar, but it's, it's apples and oranges. It was very specific. It was geared directly towards us. There were no other partners in it. Uh, right now, as Mr. Trente um, alluded to, there's already a court case pending. It's in the Commonwealth Court of Appeals, is it right now, 
us joining, adjoining that suit has no impact on how that suit's going to proceed. If the Commonwealth Court rules against, um, what would it be? They're ruling against the um, uh, the uh, health department, right? That's correct. Yeah. Right, ruling against the, the, the Secretary of Health. The Secretary of Health authorities, what it's based upon. They rule against that. I can almost guarantee you the Wolf administration is going to bring it to the Supreme Court. Okay, that doesn't change what we're bound to do. Okay, as Mr. Torrente explained. I believe that the numbers are going in the right direction. Uh, they've been there for some quite time, I, and I would like nothing else to get out from under this, but I am not going to put this board in that fight where it's already happening. For us to take on another legal action on an action that's already pending in front of Commonwealth Court doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's, it's, a, waste, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of the, everyone's energy. It's not going to change the outcome. So that is in motion. Either the governor will relent on his own or the courts will make the decision for him or they could possibly enforce what the governor is saying. So, you know, I, I think we're in a good position with that. Again, as I said at the last meeting, I wish the plan that Dr. McGee came up with would have been able to be implemented. I think we would have been able to prove for ourselves how the, the virus could move within the schools and we, which uh, groups you know, could or couldn't be exposed. Um, look, I've said it many times, I'm going to be the first person to take it off, but you know, we've had kept everybody in school. I think we've had 10 exclusions. We've only had 10 exclusions this year, which is fantastic. So, but as soon as there's movement, either from the government or from the lawsuit, yeah, we're going to move. We're going to move with it. Uh, one last question, and then I'm going to end. Um, one of the young ladies, uh, our students, uh, made a question about uh, what some person was talking about as far as uh, uh, their belief in in, um, in Jesus and and why that's allowed that to happen. Um, you know, the First Amendment is a two-way street. You know, just because you don't like another person's view doesn't mean you get to restrict what they get to say. You know, if you're at the podium and you have a specific view on a specific item, and as long as it's not profane and against the rules and it pertains somewhat to school business, you're going to be able to say that. So the same right that protects you to come up there and label people as racist is the same right that protects him to come up to the podium and talk about how his faith impacts his decisions and how that related to, to how he ex expects the school district to act. It's not for us, there's no questions at this point. It's not for us to act act on, on your opinion. It's for us to absorb what you're telling, telling us and see how we can respond and how that interfaces with what our job as school board directors is here to do. I would no less restrict your right to come up and say what you wanted to say than I, than I would his. That's what makes this country great. The First Amendment has to allow both sides, not one side. So in saying that, the last thing I want to do is take a little bit of parental um, glean here and uh, wish my, um, my daughter, Marissa, who's in Texas, a very happy 23rd birthday. Uh, we miss you. I don't know how you got to be 23. Uh, we wish you were home, but we're glad you're there doing what you're doing there in Texas. And saying that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.